Welcome back to Say Mojo Homestead. It's good to finally be back with you after several weeks of not. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, I'm so glad y'all are here with us today and this weekend. If you have not already joined our YouTube family, we would love to invite you to do that, which is just subscribing to our channel. And also, we would love to for you to comment about what we're talking about today. We would love to hear your feedback and some ideas that you might have for protein on your homestead. Yeah, so that is what we're going to be talking about, which is why we're out here with all these goats. We're talking about Who protein. are not protein, <laughs> unless you count milk and yogurt. We I mean, do not eat our goats. It has not gotten that bad yet, guys. No. Um, not out here on Say Mojo. <laughs> but yeah, we do want to talk about how we are doing protein, how we're raising it, what we're doing, and options that like if you're not at your like homestead destination, yeah. ways that you can also be doing that. We, we do want to not only talk about what we're doing, but also how you guys could be doing the same thing. So um, we're going to jump right into that. Yeah. All right, guys. Just got done washing out the truck from taking the pig, which is kind of what I wanted to talk about first with, let me put you guys down. Ooh. There you go. With uh, raising your own protein, how we do it, and just some ways that you can help to defer some of those costs. So we have talked about this in other videos, but when we do pigs, we always get one or two extra for other families, uh, other friends of ours. This go around, both of them had the land to do it, but just not the setup to do it. So we raised it for them um, and it helps to defer our feed cost and makes it a little bit more affordable for us to be able to do the protein that we're wanting to do so that all of the costs don't just fall on us. So the other benefit to that is we kind of get help with it as well. So our neighbors were raising one for them. They came and helped out this morning. One of the families that we're raising it for uh, wanted to go ahead and have theirs processed. And so we did one and then we're gonna hold on to our two and our neighbors for another probably about six weeks um, before we take ours, just to let him get a little bit more size to them. But like I was saying, uh, he came over, the neighbor that we're raising this other pig for, and helped dispatch him this morning, the one, and also helped get it into the back of my truck because let's be real, uh, I cannot lift one of these pigs by myself. So <laughs> it helps us out, helps everybody else out. And it's just another reason why community is so important um, especially if you're trying to be as self-sufficient as possible. Self-sufficiency doesn't mean you do it alone. Self-sufficiency, I believe, requires community and being able to partner up and work with other people um, so that everyone can bring their strengths and you can get that help when you need it. I think that's important. But back to what I was saying, <laughs> deferring cost, that is one way that we do it. Uh, and at the same time, we're helping other people out who aren't able to raise their own meat. So. Next, Cass is actually gonna talk about some ways that we have to rely on it from that side of the coin. So I'm here in our little camp hangout spot on our woods and behind me is actually the pasture where we did raise the cow that we had with us for a short period of time. In order to grow out a cow to full size, you really need to plan on having a cow for two years, which doesn't make it a great protein source for us. This is a heavily wooded area and we don't have a lot of land clear. So it makes raising a cow very expensive because we have to provide hay continuously. When you have such a small enclosure, it really, they exhaust the land and it's just not ideal for the cow or for the land or for your pocket. However, we do have friends that actually have connections with people that will sell half a cow. They have land and pasture so they can raise these cows on the grass. They have great living conditions and it's everything we would want if we were able to raise a cow. So um, it's worth it for us to go and just purchase half a cow from them and not have to worry about finding a way to raise it on our property, which as I said, is just not ideal 
for the cow or for um, for us really. A farm raised meat might be a little pricier than what you can find in the grocery store, but the quality that you're getting is by far cheaper than when than if you were to do something like butcher box or even the highest quality, most expensive organic um, grass fed, grass finished beef out there. So um, just some things to think about if you do want to provide really good high quality food for your family, but you can't homestead on your current land or you aren't in a situation where you can have a cow on your property. You can really provide a lot of protein for yourself and your family. And this is one way that we do it. Chickens, they may be obvious, uh, but this is one way that we're doing it and really helping to defer our grocery bill. Um, and this goes a long way. We can raise 30 chickens in this thing. That's a lot of chickens. And they're getting bigger than grocery store chickens with just minimal space and really effort. Chickens don't take a lot. Now the chicken tractor, once they get bigger, I'm moving it twice a day. But outside of that, and then making sure they have food and stuff, uh, it's really not that difficult. For protein, these are a relatively cheap investment. Now startup cost, if you gotta get like, build a chicken tractor or coop or something like that, that can be expensive up front. But then you reuse it every single time and the actual birds themselves are not that much. This year we're also doing turkeys, which I'm really excited about. Uh, we are doing a series actually kind of putting them up during the midweeks that are talking about raising turkeys, our experience with them, kind of some tips and stuff here and there. So be sure to check that out, especially if you're interested in maybe doing turkeys if you haven't before. Another thing that you can do that would be extremely space limiting and probably the one protein that requires the least amount of space are rabbits. And we did rabbits, we still have them. We're not really actively doing them right now, but we are keeping um, one or two just so that if we ever wanted to go back to breeding them, we're ready to go and can go straight into it. Rabbits is something that you can do even if you live in a neighborhood and a lot of times even with an HOA. It is a great way to provide protein for your family uh, because they require very minimal space and they count as a pet. So that's why it's okay to do them in a neighborhood. Uh, very, very easy also, the whole processing system, which I've done a video, I'll link that right here, right now. I would say probably a great gateway into raising your own protein um, if you're wanting to do that or experiment with it. So we have said that we don't have enough land for a cow for that source of protein. Um, you have heard us say that we have five acres, but we don't have five acres that we are clearing. We love these woods. These woods are um, kind of a big part of our family. We camp back here. We also will come and just have walks out here. I take walks with the kids out here. I come and pray out here. Clearing these woods for our family is not really an option. So we don't have this land for like a pasture. However, looking to the future, we have found a red meat alternative that we think we actually can clear a little bit of this land, not all of it, but a little bit and have something out here. For us, um, because we're not gonna be raising a cow, we were looking at other meat choices, red meat alternatives, and we actually decided that we are going to plan to bring some sheep onto our property, which if you know me, that's probably very surprising because I've always been really against it. I don't like lamb. It's always been too gamey. I haven't enjoyed it as a protein. However, my friend Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm said that she had had the same experience with lamb until she had farm raised lamb, which doesn't surprise me. Farm raised is always better, but um, I happen, we happen to have some friends that raised, that have farm raised lamb and they gave us some, we tried it. Of course, Jess was right. It was a totally different experience. The, there wasn't the gaminess. It was just 
a really great experience. The, the flavor was good. And we really do believe at this point that it is a great option for us in our homestead for the future for a red meat alternative. So one day we will find um, a little patch of this land that we will clear and bring some lamb onto our homestead. So that is how we are doing kind of protein, providing our protein, meat protein, and also ways that we're continuing to look into it yeah. so that we can just continue to be a little bit more sustainable and yeah. price conscious. Yeah. Hopefully you guys got some ideas from it, were inspired by it yeah. to maybe start or move into that next level of growing your own meat, raising your own meat. Um, and if not, if you don't have the space, then I mean, my hope is that we gave you ideas and hopefully motivated you to get out there and start talking to small homesteaders that could potentially raise, partner with you to raise meat for your family. Right, right. So, yeah. highs and lows. Highs and lows. Let's do it. I guess I'm going first. You're going first. Since you went first last week. Yes. <laughs> My high was mainly this weekend and last night. So since they got back like halfway through Father's Day last mm -hmm. week, we decided to do kind of do a Father's Day weekend this weekend. And so that's been a lot of fun. And we went to the Big Mo, which is a drive-in movie theater, not too far from us. Um, and just spent time as a family there last night. So I really did enjoy that. It was Joe's that's first fine. time going, well, second time, first time in memory. First time he was like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't go. And he even lost a tooth. Yep. So a good, like, it was wiggly. It was supposed to come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like knocked out a tooth. Um, so that was exciting for him. And yeah, it was just like a good time had by all, yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. It was so, a lot of fun. Yeah. My other high, which is sort of a double-edged sword, was all the rain that we got. It's also my low. Uh, we needed the rain. We always could use rain um, to some extent. So, but rain is always good. Like, rainwater is so much better than anything else you can put on In your moderation. garden. moderation. In moderation that was the, that was the downfall to it that's why it was a low because we got a ton i think the we've been out here for six years we've owned the property for almost i think 10 years um that's right and that's without right. any official like measurements or anything this was by far like the most rain we've had out here on our property that was just dumped in a short amount of time uh, our driveway literally turned into a mini creek <laughs> Uh, when we get hard rains, there we it, it flows through there. Uh, but this, I've never seen it with this much power and this much water. Uh, it was, yeah, it, yeah it was ridiculous. Our entire backwoods were pretty much flooded. Uh, Our crazy. Milk house flooded. Milk house flooded. And it was just so inconsistent throughout the week that I couldn't really get a lot done work wise. Right. Which is just the nature of outdoor work. But yeah. it does put me behind about a week. So, yeah. yeah. What about you? My high is probably that we had kind of a down week last week. Um, done with, have a little break from dance. Um, so we were able to relax a little bit from that and recover from nationals. My low was that we just have, Mariah's been a little funk this week. Yeah. I didn't feel great at the beginning of the week and then just had some emotional stuff going on. Crazy teenagers. <laughs> we love them. We love them. But we went on lots of walks. <laughs> So that was good, but she's just been in a tough place emotionally. So that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for hanging out with us, for talking protein sources with us, and we hope you have a great week and be blessed.